Welcome back slide roll fans. Uh, another day, another slide roll video. I couldn't help myself and uh, apparently you couldn't help but watch it. Um, this will be a quick tour of a slightly fancier slide roll. Uh, this is a pretty common slide roll, the K&E uh, 4181-1. Uh, this is also five inches, um, like the one we were using, uh, just makes it easy for the video. Um, there is a 10 inch version of this called the 4181-3. Um, this is a plastic uh, rule with metal end braces. It's a duplex rule, which means it has full complement of scales on both sides and cursor which reads on both sides. Um, now there, there is also a version of this rule which is uh, celluloid over wood, I think it's mahogany, um, and you will see the celluloid over wood or bamboo on a lot of slide rolls um, from the 50s and 60s. Um, so, uh, the first advanced feature this slide roll has that wasn't on our basic roll are these folded scales. Uh, these are the CIF, the CF, and the DF scales. Um, let me show you what they can be used for. Uh, so say I want to do our classic off-scale calculation, which was 4 uh, times 6. So here on the D scale, I found the 4, and I'm going to try to do multiplication in the original method uh, by finding the 1 and aligning it with the 4. Then we remember that the result is here off-scale, where the 6 is reading on the C scale. Now, the magic of the folded scale is, even though this 6 is off-scale, the 6 on the folded C scale is on scale. So I'm going to move the cursor to the 6 on the folded C scale and read the result 24 on the folded D scale. Okay, this is just a taste of how you can use these folded scales, but sometimes when your calculation is off scale on C or D, uh, or CI, it will be on scale on CI, CIF, sorry, CIF, CF, or DF. Um, Actually, for that purpose, it would be optimal to fold the scales at square root 10. So you will occasionally see slide rules uh, which are folded at square root 10 instead. That's exactly in the middle of a C or a D scale. Um, but uh, most are folded at pi, and we'll see why in a second. Now, what does it mean to be folded? It means what they did is they took a C, the C and the D scale, and remember these, these continue in both directions, and they just slid it. So it's kind of like a preset, uh, pre-setting of the slide, except they're both set the same way, right? So here the one, you see here you see one, two, this is the same as over here. Uh, the three, this region is the same. Um, it's just all moved over and then that part comes folded around back, uh, which uh, is normally over here. Um, now, you might be thinking, based on our basic slide roll videos, well that just does a multiplication with respect to the C or the D scale, and that's true. And that's why they're usually folded at pi, which is very close to square root 10. Uh, the reason being, if you, if, let's not, don't consider the slide, uh, let's take it out. So if you just consider the D scale versus the folded D scale, and you set, say, the cursor to 7, uh, then what it will read on the DF scale, the folded D scale, um, is about 7 times pi, because all, all that this is is a preset scale uh, which is already slid um, with respect to the D scale. Um, so this is about uh, 22 as you can see here. Um, going in the reverse direction, you can divide by pi. Okay, so folding at pi is useful uh, to speed up those calculations involving pi. Um, an additional application of the folded scales is to chain addition and division, or sorry, multiplication and division without resetting the slide as many times. Um, that's a subject for a more advanced video, um, but you could play around if you have one of these slide rules and see if you can figure out ways to do combination of two operations with only one setting of the slide. Okay. Um, now, the... the the fancier slide rolls often have these more complicated arrangements. There's just many more scales on it than the basic slide roll. Um, let's look at the back. Um, you see the S and the T scales, these are, these are the same as we had. Uh, you can see the complements of the angles are marked, unlike on our basic slide roll. Um, they're also marked in red because they decrease as you go to the right. Um, 
so you can compute cosines without having to compute the complements in your head because the complements are printed on the sine scale. Um, however, they have slightly uh, fancier arrangement which allows us to do some things in a nicer way. So if you remember our basic slide rule video number five, I computed uh, tangent of 70. First I computed uh, the complement and got tw 20 degrees, but you can see here if I'm thinking I could just read the 70 in red on the tangent scale. Um, but then we knew we had to compute the reciprocal um, because we're computing cotangent of 20, uh, but we what we wanted to do was <laughs> take the reciprocal of that uh, and we used the CI scale on the back of the slide of the basic slide rule, but you see here this slide rule has this arrangement with a DI printed on the base here. So I can read the correct result, which was about two point, let's see, I think it was seven five, so five, six, seven, yeah, about two point seven five uh, directly on the DI scale there uh, without having to do something as complicated as we had to do with the basic slide rule. Um, there's often scales for more extreme ranges, so the, the ST scale which on some slide rules is uh, called SRT, um, is essentially an extended scale, which you can think of as extending either the, the sine scale or the tangent scale on the left. So you see both of those scales end at about 5.7, and that's where this one ends on the right. So it's kind of like the, I don't have room here. It's kind of like you could align these two, right? If you, if you went to the end of this, right, and then the S and T scales continue there, it's extended and it does the next order of magnitudes of sine or tangents uh, between, you can see it's printed here, 0 0.01 and 0 0.1 instead of 0 0.1 and point, or sorry, 0 0.1 and 1.0. Um, now the reason it works for sines and tangents is because sine um, and tangent are similar for small angles. Um, if you have seen the graphs or you've studied calculus, you know a good reason for that. Um, also, the R here is for radian. Um, the sine and the tangent of a small angle is actually almost the same as the, the radian measure of that angle. Um, so they throw in an R here. SRT is the same as an ST scale, uh, but some sl slide rules will have R there. Um, okay. Um, uh, we saw on the other advanced slide rule I showed you uh, a T2 scale, uh, which eliminates the need for using the reciprocal scale for reading the tangents uh, greater than 45 degrees. Uh, but again, that kind of continues the tangent scale on the right side instead of on the left side. Um, the general idea is you get these scales which continue, um, so you don't have to use other tricks for computing things. Um, the other nice thing you have on most more advanced slide rules are something called log-log scales. Uh, these allow you to compute arbitrary exponentials and logs, and these could be the subject of a series of videos uh, in, in themselves. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a couple basic things. Um, so we're going to look at, uh, back on the other side, the log log 3 scale, which is labeled LL3. Um, here, here's how we could compute 4 to the 1.7. What I do is on the log log 3 scale, I find the 4. Let's see. There's the 4. Okay. And then... Using the C scale, which is on the slide, I align the left index of that C scale, the 1. Um, then what happens is uh, exponentials of 4 um, can be read by going out to that exponent that you want. So let's see here. Here's 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 1 on the C scale. And then reading back down on the log log 3 scale, you see here it looks like about 10, there's 11, 10.5. Um, you'll notice that the log log 3 scale, it has a lot of uh, magnitude happening here at the end. And, and the log log scales um, don't work exactly like the C and the D scales in the sense that um, the, the decimal point is actually fixed for you on the log log scales. Um, let's check that against the calculator here. So I have uh, 4 to the 1.7. Okay, about 10.5, not bad. Now, um, so what I did was I found the base on the log log 3 scale, the 4. I aligned that with the 1 on the C scale. Then I went out to the exponent that I wanted. Um, 
you can see if I went out to exponent 2 on the C scale, then it's going to be reading 16 for 4 squared. Uh, but unlike using the A or the B scale to compute 4 squared, I can set that cursor anywhere a little to the left, you know, 1 point something, 2 point something, I can pick this arbitrary exponent. Um, you can see that the numbers on the log log 3 scale kind of explode here to the right, because what happens? Well, by the time I get to 4 to the 9, that's a really big number. Um, and so we kind of have this exponential explosion happening here on the right. Uh, you can do this process in reverse to compute logarithms of arbitrary base. Uh, so how could I do this log with base 5? Well, again, I'll find on the log log 3 scale um, the base, which here is 5. So see, I found the 5 on the log log 3 scale. Um, then what I'll do is, I'll again, I'll align the 1. Right. Then I'll find the 30 on the log log 3 scale. So here's 20. This is 30. Uh, and I can read the result there. It looks like about 2.1 and maybe a hair, so maybe 2.11. Um, why does it work like that? Well, this is the same setting we just did, right? I took 5, I went to some power, and I got 30, except I asked the question, well, what is the power, right? So instead of reading the result on the log log 3 scale, I read the result on the C scale. Um, let's check our computation here. Uh, so here, let's, let's do this as 30. Okay. Uh, sorry, I think I hit the wrong button. Uh, 30. 2.11, not bad. Okay, um, how does this work? How does this work? Well, the principle is that um, going from the C scale to the log log 3 scale actually computes natural exponential e to the x. So, um, uh, you could, this is also d. Um, well, let's align the C and the d so it doesn't matter. Okay, um, so if I'm at 1 here on the C or the D scale, you can see the log log 3 scale is reading E because um, E to the 1, right, is E. Okay, uh, E squared here, right, um, 7.4 or so, E squared. Right, so, so just reading between D and LL3, it computes E to the X. Of course, doing that in reverse and reading log log 3 to D, you compute um, natural log, sorry, I don't, I don't know why I wrote this here, <laughs> okay, so reading from log log 3 to C, uh, if x is appearing on log log 3, then you read the natural log of x on the C scale or the D scale. Uh, so let's analyze how this computation works. So here I've done a little um, identity. So 3.5 to the 2.4, um, I can write that as e to the natural log of 3.5 to the 2.4. These are inverse functions, remember. Um, now, in the exponent here, I'm going to apply this log rule for the natural log. So this 2.4 exponent comes down. And you can see to compute this 3.5 to the 2.4, um, I'm going to follow this sequence of operations, starting with this natural log. Right. So to compute natural log, um, I should find on the log log 3 scale the 3.5. Uh, here's the 3.5. Then I should multiply by 2.4. So, so natural log of 3.5 is appearing on the D scale now. So to multiply by 2.4, I use our original multiplication method of aligning the 1 with that natural log of 3.5 on the D scale, and then moving out to the 2.4. So on, what that does is, that computes 2.4 times natural log of 3.5, and the result is on the D scale. Now, that result in brackets here is on the D scale, so I need to take the exponential. Um, so I should read, uh, here replace C with D, I should read D to log log 3. Um, so reading D to log log 3, um, I read the result as about 20. Let's C slash D. Okay, um, let's check that on the calculator. So here, 3.5 to the 2.4. Okay, about 20. All right, this has been a quick 
overview of a fancier slide rule. They get even fancier than this. Um, maybe I will make some future videos about these scales, but um, you will learn better if you get yourself a manual, um, experiment, and uh, have some fun with it. All right? Hope you enjoyed it.